Hey guys, what's up? It's Ellie here. Fallout 76 has been out for two months now as I am making this video and already the community has found all sorts of hidden and not so hidden easter eggs, references and all kinds of unique setups in the game. I gave myself the task of finding as many of these easter eggs as I could and so far this is what I've found. A full list with timestamps is available in the description below and I hope you enjoy this video. Located south of the Torrance House and north of Uncanny Caverns is a Toy Story 3 scene. Fans of the film will remember the antagonist Pink Teddy named Lotso. Well, this easter egg mimics the scene at the end of the film where he is found by a truck driver at a junkyard and then is tied to the front of his truck. Instead of Lotso, however, you will find a Comrade Chubbs. Hey buddy, you might want to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> At the White Springs Golf Club, as well as many, many, many golfs, there is a kitchen, and in this kitchen is a fridge, although this one doesn't open. Upon closer inspection, you can observe a small clown toy inside of it, alongside a red balloon. This easter egg of course left me a little concerned and confused, to which I left this location almost immediately after seeing it. If you're familiar with Stephen King's novel It and the two movies based on this novel, you might too. This easter egg is quite a large one you've likely already found, the Torrens House, located at the lower centre of the map. At this location you can find multiple references to Stanley Kubrick's novel and film adaptation The Shining, where Jack Torrance, his wife and child take residency in the retired Overlook Hotel, the first being a tricycle, being a reference to Jack's son Danny. But nearby are some wooden blocks that spell out Red Rum, which he eerily begins to repeat in the film. Red rum. Red rum. Red rum. Red rum. If you head into the hedge maze you will also find the skeleton of Jack Torrance and his famous fire axe. On the top of the building, you will also notice a humorous setup with some skeletons. In between the Vantage and Twin Lakes is a small lake with something odd in the centre. Upon closer inspection, we see that this is in fact a behemoth. If you shoot or alert it, it will burst out of the water with a roar and begin combat. This could be a reference to Swan from Fallout 4, a unique super mutant behemoth that you also find it upon in the Boston Common. Swan was actually born Edgar Swan, and was imprisoned for stealing cigarettes before he was exposed to the FEV, and nearby the behemoth is a skeleton that sits with a cigarette. Another reference to Fallout 4 is found in the Riverside Manor of the Fallout 76 map, which is the home of fictional in-game actress Shannon Rivers. Rivers played the Mistress of Mystery in a radio play adaptation of the popular Fallout Universe comic book series called The Silver Shroud. You could listen to the play on the Silver Shroud radio channel in Fallout 4 around the area of Good Neighbor. The station is run by Kent Connolly, a ghoul who was a fan of the Silver Shroud comics before the Great War. When going through a terminal in the Riverside Manor, you can find a message from Kent where he expresses his disappointment in continuity errors between the Mistress of Mystery character from the original comic books and Rivers' later performances in the radio play adaptation. This could also be an easter egg making fun of Fallout fans who made similar criticisms about Fallout 76. This easter egg doesn't have a particular location, but found in many places all over the map are vault tech themed calendars. On them appears a phone number that when called actually leads you to a pre-recorded vault tech message. These calendars were also included in Fallout 4 as another easter egg. Thank you for calling vault tech, your first choice in post-nuclear survival. Found in the White Springs Resort is a pram with wooden blocks inside that spell out the name Gary. This is a reference to Fallout 3's Gary clones in Vault 108. The clones are also referenced in Fallout 4 as a running gag similarly with wooden blocks. 
The Gary clones themselves could actually be a reference to a British sitcom called Only Fools and Horses, in the episode Strangers on the Shore, where a foreign immigrant can only speak a single English word, the name Gary. Gary? <laughs> <laughs> Hidden in the office space of a building within the ash heap lies a picture frame that you'll have to take a second look at. A framed red handprint and the wooden block spelling out we know could only mean one thing, the Dark Brotherhood. An infamous faction of assassins, the Dark Brotherhood makes an appearance in multiple Elder Scrolls games, but is probably pointing specifically at Skyrim as after you follow through a contract, Created by a vengeful child named Aventus Arantino, you will receive a mysterious note with the black handprint and the words we know written beneath it. I'm sure everyone listening can recognise this ominous tune as the theme from Steven Spielberg's Jaws. On the far left of the map along the river, you can come across a familiar easter egg we have seen once before in Fallout 4 a mutated dolphin slash shark looking creature, and a body who is a reference to Quint from Jaws, complete with bandana. A very creepy easter egg can be found in the AVR Medical Center, where an unsettling scene unfolds of a Jangles the Moon Monkey laying in a surgical theater with an alien toy on his face. This is a reference to the scene in Ridley Scott's 1979 film, Alien. Where do you want to do this? I'm making a decision just below the knuckle there. Right here, stand by. This easter egg can be easy to miss, but slightly west of the pumpkin house is a picnic table in a camp setup. On this picnic table will be some beer bottles that are laid out in such a way that when you look at them, you'll think to yourself, is this loss? Hidden within Fort Defiance is a terrifying piece of apparel called the Fasnat Man Mask. You can find it at the new Appalachian Central train yard, hidden in a broken safe on an alien toy. This mask is actually a part of a set, however at this point it has been the only mask that has been found or released. The Fasnat masks seem to be linked with the location Helvetia in-game which is based on a real West Virginian town. It is an isolated community reported in 2010 to only have a population of 59 and was settled by Swiss and German immigrants in 1869. The town is known for maintaining strong Swiss traditions, including Fasnacht. The festival is celebrated on the Monday following Ash Wednesday and lasts 72 hours. The terrifying masks are worn to scare away the cold of the winter. And in the Primer Fallout 76 game guide, when you look up Helvetia in the Atlas section, a line about the traditional masks says, perhaps this is headgear that can be found when a event of the same name is active. This suggests that we may have access to more of these masks if we explore the area during the actual Fasnat event, which hasn't yet ever occurred. When exploring the northeast side of the map around Freddy Fear's House of Scares, a miscellaneous quest, Kill a Wendigo when you are wearing a clown costume, will appear. This quest could be a reference to Alpha Flight, a comic book series where the clown from the Circus of Crime attempts to go after the Wendigo. Located not too far from the entrance of Vault 76 is an odd cabin. You can't enter it without doing a little bit of parkour. But once you've jumped onto the back porch, you can enter the home. Upon entry, however, there is a large hole in the floor that you can jump down and come across a mass murder scene with the words, Sickle Man was here, along with the murder weapon. When I searched for any information on the Sickle Man, thinking it was maybe some West Virginian law, I found nothing but one reference. On an IMBD page was a film called Sickle Man. Its status was still pre-production on the page, but the last update to the page was in June 2017, and it doesn't look legitimate at all, but what made me think that there still might be a connection was the fact that the film was listed as filmed in West Virginia. So is Sickle Man an antagonist the developers wanted to bring to life in-game, or just a coincidence? 
I think the vast majority of people who play Fallout can appreciate all the funny setups with teddies that can be found around the map. They aren't usually a reference to anything and are just cute or amusing finds. However, at the Palace of the Winding Path, we can come across three bears, a stuffed grizzly, a polar bear, and an imported Chinese panda who was stacked on top of each other. These bears are a reference to an online webcomic created by Daniel Chung to an animated sitcom on Cartoon Network called We Bear Bears, which follows three bear siblings, Grizzly, Panda, and Ice Bear, and their attempts to integrate with the human world. No, excuse me. No, man. I guess it's allergy season. Dude, that was the cutest sneeze ever. Stop saying that I'm cute! Yeah! Oh, bless you. That was such a cute sneeze. In the city of Tanagra, graffiti on a wall reads Darmok and Jalad. This would be most recognizable to fans of the Star Trek The Next Generation series. The graffiti refers to an episode in the series named Dharma, which involves the Enterprise team making first contact with the children of Tama, an alien race that speaks entirely in metaphor. Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. Around Appalachia, players will find countless references to West Virginian folklore, including the hyped cryptid Mothman. The Mothman sightings influenced a non-fiction book by author John Keel in 1975 following alleged sightings of the creature. This book then influenced a 2002 film adaptation of the same name, The Mothman Prophecies. It's a supernatural horror mystery film directed by Mark Pellington and follows a reporter that researches the legend of the Mothman. Located west of the Mothman Museum location is a collapsed bridge, which is a reference to the film and to the real-life tragedy of Point Pleasant. However, hidden beneath, underwater, you will notice some lights, almost Christmassy. That's because hidden deep under the water beneath the bridge, there is a Christmas tree. This is another reference to the film, where a character recalls a dream they had. After completing the quest Signal Strength, a new quest line begins when you talk to Rose at the top of the world called Flavors of Mayhem. In this quest line, Rose outlines five different gangs and mentions that they all had some pretty creative solutions to sticky situations, and wants to remember what they were. The last gang to be mentioned is the Gourmands, and you may possibly remember that name from Fallout New Vegas. A raider gang under the guise of the White Glove Society can be located in the Ultra Lux Hotel in the New Vegas Strip, along with their exclusive meat-orientated restaurant, the Gourmand. To the west of the Sunday Brothers Cabin, we will find a reference to the TV series Breaking Bad. In the episode Buried, Walter White, aka Heisenberg, attempts to cover his tracks by burying a very large amount of cash in the desert. At this location in the wilderness, we can find an easter egg of the scene. Buried cash, a skeleton, and a gas mask. A second Breaking Bad easter egg lies within Lady Janet's soft serve, in a scorched filled trailer. You will find two teddies on top of a chemistry table wearing gas masks. There is also a cool barbecuing teddy outside. This easter egg is located in a lake east of the lakeside cabins. On the bottom of the lake you will find a woman skeleton laying on top of a door, and close by will be the arm of a second skeleton, like as if it were reaching out to the first. This of course is a reference to James Cameron's 1997 Titanic, a drama slash disaster film following the romance of first class passenger Rose and penniless artist Jack. I promise. Just as we'd all love to go back and save Leonardo DiCaprio the way it should have been done, it's time to let go and head to our next easter egg. Located nearby Vault 76 at the isolated cabin is a doghouse on the west side. If you stop to look inside this doghouse, you will notice an equation written on the floor, test tubes down the back, and the entire periodic table on the left side. If you're still scratching your head, well, the equation on the floor is actually a section of Einstein's theory of relativity, which means that this isn't just a reference to the famous scientist, but instead, Einstein the dog in Back to the Future. 
from one iconic doggo to the next, nearby and more specifically to the east, you'll come across another dog house with a skeleton on top. This would be a reference to Snoopy, Charlie Brown's pet from the Peanuts comic strip, show and movies. Snoopy is commonly shown laying or sitting on top of his dog house where the skeleton lays. Nearby is also a baseball bat referencing Charlie Brown's baseball team and a birdhouse belonging to the Yellow Canary Woodstock. Inside this doghouse is a table and some bears. This would be a reference to a Thanksgiving episode where Snoopy has his own table and feast. While exploring the wasteland, you may come across a friendly iBot, the tune of the British Grenadiers, and a line of tame rad rats following close behind. This event could happen anywhere on the map at any time and references a famous folklore story. The Pied Piper of Hamelin is a legend originating from Germany that dates back to the Middle Ages. He was hired by his town to lure rats away with his magic pipe. However, when the citizens of the town refused to pay him for his services, the Pied Piper decided to use his magical pipe's power to lead the children of the town away, just like he did with the rats as revenge. North of the Poseidon Energy Plant is the giant teapot. Not only is this location a reference to an actual location in West Virginia, hidden in plain sight within the teapot is a sticky note with a 10 6 written on it alongside some wooden blocks that spell out late. And it does get curiouser and curiouser. Exploring the east of Tyler County Fairgrounds, you may come across a tea party setup complete with balloons, tea, a sweet roll, and many different hats. This, of course, is a reference to the 1865 novel Alice in Wonderland, written by Lewis Carroll, and its film adaptations where a girl named Alice falls through a rabbit hole into a very peculiar fantasy world. <laughs> and speaking of peculiar worlds, we'll be given the opportunity to explore a world of pure imagination. Sort of. In a randomly occurring event, players may come across a ghoul in the middle of the road named Willie. The ghoul will be wearing a black top hat, a coat, and will carry a golden holo tape which congratulates you on finding it. This is a reference to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, a novel by Roald Dahl and its film adaptations, where five lucky children find hidden golden tickets in chocolate bars which win them the opportunity to visit Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. The golden holotape that you pick up from Ghoul Willie's corpse is voiced by someone called Dick Shale. The message will tell you that you have won an adventure tour of Uncanny Caverns. This is actually a reference to the Lost World Caverns in Lewisburg, West Virginia. Upon entering and exploring the caverns, you will begin to learn about the mysterious Night Kid. Night Kid is a clear reference to the West Virginian folklore story of Bat Boy, a fanged and large-eyed human boy who was raised by bats. Though the legend debuted in 1991 when it was published in the American supermarket tabloid World Weekly News, it is still being investigated today. Dick Shale is your tour guide in Uncanny Caverns, and though you may remember him from automated tours such as the Fancy Lads Factory and Prickett's Fort, you may also remember this reference from a popular Simpsons character. You might remember me from such self-help videos as Smoke Yourself Thin and Get Confident, Stupid. If you find yourself wandering around in Camden Park, wander more southwest and you will come across a quest marker and a damaged Camden Park security protectron standing by a shed for employees only. The bot will urge you to clock in ASAP and your quest will update to put on a uniform. But if you ignore the quest for a second and take a look at the terminal, you can find a list of employee infraction reports. Select M. Porkins, and the two updates on the bottom read, 
The Porkins family has made a donation to the park. His new role will be assistant to the park manager. And Marty Porkins' title has been changed to assistant park manager. This is actually a reference to The Office. So effective immediately, I am promoting you from assistant to the regional manager to assistant regional manager. At the Monongah Outlook will be a pair of portable toilets. In one will be a mysterious elevator button, which upon being clicked doesn't actually do anything. Though it is not a direct link, it is likely that this is actually a reference to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, where Harry, Ron, and Hermione use Polyjuice Potion to disguise themselves as Ministry officials to get Slytherin's locket from Umbridge and use the toilets as a portal. In Fallout 76, the toilets are actually an exit for players to use after launching a nuke, giving a new meaning to the name Porta Potty. Portal? Potty? Anyone? Okay. In between, the Carnoir, Nuka-Cola plant, and Camden Park will be a small home. The kitchen kinda looks similar to the house you begin Fallout 4 in, and further inside you will find wooden blocks, some strangely placed items in a cot, an outfit, and a very formal rad roach complete with a wedding ring, boulder hat, and cane. This is actually a reference to the miniseries Monster Factory from Polygon, hosted by Griffin and Justin. The pair created the character, the final Pam, in Fallout 4, and the home is filled with many small references to the series. Still a little wordy. <laughs> <laughs> the final Pam. That's Watch that's you. good. You will become so powerful. <laughs> Rochi. <laughs> will you marry me? He said yes. <laughs> If you like fairy tales, then you're probably going to be a big fan of this randomly occurring event. On your travels, you may encounter a Miss Nanny and be given a miscellaneous quest to stay and listen to her story. If you stick around, you could listen to an interesting rendition of the seven well-known stories such as Hansel and Gretel, Cinderella, Little Red Riding Hood, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Jack and Jill, Jack and the Beanstalk, or The Three Little Pigs. Once upon a time, there were three bears. A mama bear, a baba bear, and a baby bear. When following the quest, Tentative Plants, the player is sent to investigate Responder Miguel and his old camp for any useful supplies or information. This is only a small link and may not possibly be intentional, but Miguel's last name, Caldera, is actually the name of an Imperial Charter town in the Elder Scrolls Morrowind. Similarly to the last reference, I came across a Protectron merchant in White Springs, which instantly made me think of Dishonored and the Pendleton Brothers, but other than that, unfortunately, there were no further obvious links. Another randomly occurring event includes a Mr. Handy named Vlad and a Miss Nanny named Mia having a strange conversation. The two make observations, ask questions, and muse about their relationship to one another, but never really seem to be having a proper conversation. The interaction between these two bots is actually a reference to a Twitch channel called ZBots Chat, where two Google Home devices are streamed having a conversation. The two bots could also be a stab at jokes made towards Bethesda's Elder Scrolls Oblivion, where NPCs seem to also have strange, disconnected interactions. Take care. Greetings is the one. <sighs> Good day. Enough talk. It's you. Hi. I understand the Fighters Guild is hiring new members. Go away, fool. Oh, if that's the way you feel. Graham is a friendly super mutant trader that can be found wandering the map along with his trusty pack brahmin, Chally the Moo Moo. If you follow him, Graham has a variety of dialogue that he will rotate through as he adventures the map. A specific piece of this dialogue will list various types of meat. This is a reference to a scene in Forrest Gump, where Bubba lists different ways you can serve shrimp. Anyway, like I was saying, shrimp is the food of the sea. You can barbecue it, boil it, Brawl it, bake it, saute it, based on shrimp kebabs, shrimp creole, shrimp gumbo, pan fried, deep fried, stir fried, there's pineapple and shrimp. 
Yep, it's me again. You're probably wondering how I got myself in this situation. Trapped on the roof of the Jar Toss booth at the Tyler County Fair. Well, it appears that it probably had something to do with Raiders, but more than that, it's yet another Easter egg in Fallout 76. Interestingly, this isn't actually referencing a specific show or film, but an internet meme combining two common TV tropes, where a character is introduced during a strange or absurd situation by a freeze frame and a voiceover, explaining how they arrived in their current predicament. Just outside of Morgantown High School, on the west side is a yellow school bus. On that school bus towards the front are a couple of piles of cash and some duffel bags. This could possibly be a nod to the opening scene of The Dark Knight. In a parking lot of one of the entrances to Camden Park will be a bus parked at a bus stop. On the bus you will find some wooden blocks spelling out the word magic and an orange tie Mr. Fuzzy in the driver's seat with a clown hat on. This could very much be a magic school bus reference. The Sons of Dane compound located in the Savage Divide hosts a quest named One Violent Night. When at the location, the quest event will begin and a Dane Rogers will begin to speak outlining that a creature that they called the Night Stalker had attacked Buck's Den beer house every night they had partied. Rogers enlists everyone that can hear the message to help make a large ruckus using the jukebox and instruments to lure the Night Stalker back to the beer house and defeat it once and for all. But this is a storyline that seems quite familiar. The epic story of Beowulf is considered possibly the oldest surviving long story in Old English where the hero Beowulf comes to the age of Hrothgar, the king of the Danes, whose newly built Mead Hall has been under attack by a monster called Grendel. So in Fallout 76 One Violent Night, the Sons of Dane are subjects to King Hrothgar, and the Night Stalker, who is a Wendigo, is Grendel. Wait, Marty, we have to go back. It seems that we've forgotten a second Back to the Future Easter egg. This one is located at Pylon V13 at the southeast corner of the map. There you will encounter a monorail track and a makeshift staircase up to the train on the rail. Inside is a generator, a couple of scientists' corpses, and a makeshift lab set. You will find a holotape that is voiced by Professor Greebly, who sounds oddly similar to the doc himself, explaining his plans to use the pylon as a means for time travel. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. At the south end of the Savage Divide is the Lucky Hole Mine. When initially exploring the mine, there is a small room to the left. As you approach this room, a dark, shadowy figure begins to become visible, Power Armor, creepily facing the darkest corner of the room. This is likely a reference to the Blair Witch Project, which features a scene where a character is found in a basement staring at the wall, refusing to turn around and face what is behind them. While you continue to explore the Lucky Hole Mine, you will also get the sense through some terminal logs that something creepy is actually going on. Walking through the mine further will bring you to some nightmarish effigies and altars, along with the notes that relate to a demonic cult that had been performing sacrificial rituals to a wood god, identified as the Interloper. In one of the chambers, nearby the skeletal remains of the members of the cult, you can see tentacles that slowly move and resemble tree roots. It is possible that some of these sacrificial altars and the tentacles might be a reference to H.P. Lovecraft's writings about Cthulhu. In between a relay tower icon and a bear icon on the southern side of the map is Johnson's Acre. It's a cabin in the woods that isn't particularly special until you look up. 
If you climb the nearby rock formation, you'll come across three corpses on three strange mechanisms and three detonators. When you set off a detonator, it will fling a corpse off the cliff far into the distance, and you can do the same for the other two. It is even possible to throw a teammate into the sky with it. This doesn't seem to be a reference to any popular culture, though it's a fun find. To the east of Harpers Ferry and west of Tanagra Town is a rocky cliff which is harder to approach if coming from the direction of Harpers Ferry, though when finally conquered head to the northern side of the cliff to find a friendly and loyal dog who is stuck by their owners even after death. Unfortunately, you cannot interact with the creature or have it as a companion, but the area around it is available to have as a camp location, so feel free to give this lonely pup a safe, warm place to spend their remaining days. This isn't a direct reference to anything, though there are many stories out there of dogs remaining loyal to their owners even after their deaths. Written in an email located on the Garahan Mining Company terminal is a reference to a Canadian television show from the 80s called Kids in the Hall. It mentions that the Family Fun Day event will feature the musical stylings of Rod Terfulson's Armada, which references this particular sketch from the show. I love the name Armada, okay? You love the name Armada. Yeah. But the name Armada can mean so many things. That's why we like it, I thought. Could we just hear him out, please? What were you thinking about, Dad? A name change? That's right. Listen to this. How about Rod Torfeson's Armada? <laughs> Back in the beginning of the game, a sticky note found on the mirror of your vault room's bathroom leaves a little reminder to not put the toilet paper on backwards. This sticky note references a small controversy in Fallout 4 about the placement of the toilet paper and a mod that was created as a solution to reverse the role. The final quest for the Enclave faction gives you the ability to gain access to the nuclear silos across the map. The quest's name I Am Become Death is a reference to J. Robert Oppenheimer, the wartime head of Los Alamos Laboratory and is among those who are credited with being the father of the atomic bomb. During an interview with Oppenheimer after the first successful test under the Manhattan Project, he quotes the Gita, a 700 verse Hindu scripture in Sanskrit, and says, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, which is where the name of the quests originates from. It says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Located in Fort Defiance, in one of the first rooms is a hospital bed with a skeleton wearing a stocking cap laying on it. Its face is covered with a pillow, the grim scene is actually a reference from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, a 1976 film that starred Jack Nicholson, whose character also wore a stocking cap and was smothered by a pillow in an asylum. This one is more like a secret than a reference, but it's still pretty cool. If you purchased the Red Rocket Mega Sign from the Atom Store, place it down and attempt to destroy it it will blast off like a real rocket. This dark reference is found at a church in Sutton, which is located in the centre of the map, not very far from Flatwoods. Corpses fill the pews, all seated next to a cup. This grim scene is likely a reference to the Jonestown Massacre in 1978 where an American religious and paranoid leader known as Jim Jones initiated a mass murder, leading over 900 people to drink cyanide. The patrolman sunglasses at the back of the church are likely to represent Jones, as he too wore similar sunglasses to hide his bloodshot eyes gained from lack of sleep and heavy stimulant use. A note nearby called Leader's Journal details their plan to poison those in the church in order to steal their possessions. A set list found in the ash pit mentions the name Jesse White, the Dancing Bandit. This is actually a reference to Jesco White, also known as the Dancing Outlaw, who is known as an American folk dancer and entertainer from West Virginia. During a certain questline, you will find yourself at a location known as the Glassed Cavern. 
explore this cavern and you will find some wooden blocks spelling out the word plug. Though it may just seem like gibberish, it's actually a reference to a game known as Colossal Cave Adventure, though some know it just as Adventure. The player explores a cave rumoured to be filled with wealth by using simple text commands. When the player arrives at a certain point of the cave, there is a possibility that they will receive a message saying a hollow voice says plug. Visiting Gilman Lumbermill, you will come across some non-hostile protectrons that search the area for wood. After speaking to them, they will give you some wood scraps and go through various dialogue. Although some of this dialogue may be familiar to some, these two lines are actually references to Monty Python's The Lumberjack Song. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night. I work all day. I cut down trees. I eat my lunch. I go to the lavatory. Among the perk cards of 76, you will notice all sorts of interesting and funny card designs. However, the Enforcer perk card is actually a reference to a film called Killing Me Softly, starring Brad Pitt who plays the role of an enforcer. When you compare the film's poster to the card, you can see the clear similarities. In the basement of the Black Bear Lodge, you can find an interesting holotape. On the hollow tape, there are two men who discuss advertising a free weekend at their lodge, where they would hunt those who attended. The hollow tape is named The Addington's Dangerous Game and is found in the basement. This discussion is very similar to the storyline of The Most Dangerous Game, a short story written by Richard Connell in 1924 that has been adapted into radio, film, and television. Wait, are you talking about hunting? so surprised. You know it makes sense. I can see it on your face. This reference is yet another reference to Fallout 4. At the mountainside bed and breakfast, there is a terminal. After hacking into the terminal, there is a post from a couple named Rex Meekham and Kate Levi. Rex is actually one of the scientists who are responsible for the Nuka-Cola Quantum, and you can find his body in the Nuka World DLC in the Secure Beverage Lab, where he was locked away after the Great War along with his fellow scientists and eventually became incredibly paranoid, recording numerous holotapes and eventually dying of radiation poisoning. Rex is also in himself a reference, being an amalgamation of the names Cal Mickham, the main character of the 1955 science fiction movie This Island Earth, and the actor that portrays him, Rex Reason. In 2003, Black Isle Studios cancelled Project Van Buren, which was the project name assigned to what would be a third Fallout game. The game was going to be developed in an engine referred to as the Jefferson Engine, which was fully 3D, but the game was never completed and was cancelled due to financial difficulties. In Van Buren, the player would awaken in a prison cell, but not the one that they remembered falling asleep in. After a violent explosion, they are knocked unconscious and when they finally regain back their consciousness, find their cell door wide open and a hole in the wall which leads to the outside world. The player would escape prison and find that they are now being pursued by robots who want to return them to the prison. In Fallout 76, there is a quest named Falsely Accused that begins randomly in the Toxic Valley region after the completion of Bureau of Tourism, when the player comes across robotic marshals who mistaken them for a prison escapee and become hostile. This could very well be a reference to the original Fallout 3 storyline. In the northeastern part of the map, you will come across an awesome crashed space station, which is inhabited by super mutants. Though at first it may seem very Star Wars-esque, the design of the space station is also extremely similar to a space station design named the Bomb, Ballistic Orbital Missile Base, that was meant to appear in the cancelled Fallout 3 Van Buren. The design was leaked onto the No Mutants Allowed forum in 2005. It is also quite possible that this crashed space station is a reference to the never-completed Fallout game by Black Isle Studios. And there we have it, a whole bunch of Fallout 76 references and easter eggs. I enjoyed visiting every single one and took a screenshot for my loading screens. Maybe this is something you guys might want to do as well. I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, and I'll see you next time. Bye!